it's day four, five, seven. Spray is parked up because there's nothing for it to do. We're sorting out the shed base and I'm going to do something completely different. It's morning. I'm in the sunflower field. They're looking straight up at the sky because the sun's sort of up there with a little bit of a tilt that way. Just measuring this one now. It's sort of 55 centimetres. So it's about knee high. So on the 23rd, it's the 22nd of June today. On the 23rd of June last year, they were waist height. So they're kind of probably only half the height of what they would, would have been then. So we really hope that they get a move on. Like I say, we're going to put some fertiliser on and try and push them on. It's just the only problem that's going to do is the weeds are going to take advantage of the fertiliser as well. But they are growing. And when you look across the field now, you do just generally see some flowers rather than the weed. So hopefully they'll shade them out. This is the S of the NHS. And we've got buds now on the cornflowers. And it looks pink. It doesn't look blue. It's supposed to be blue. Anyway, there's quite a few of them now if you look across all stuck up we'll come back in a few days and see what it looks like they look like they're going to flower too early now you can flail mow them and hold them back but i'm a bit dubious about doing that in case it kills them so we'll just have to see what happens but they've come on a lot now they've kind of left the weed behind as well which is good i don't know whether they'll bush out i might speak to someone today and see whether if we flail them they'll start to bush out and then slow them down and they'll flower at the right time when people are here visiting the sunflowers so where we cut the grass around them it's just growing off again now so that probably needs a bit of a flail so it starts knitting out a bit thicker because it's still quite thin in places hope you can hear me over the noise of the peewits this is where this track was that we took out anyway looks great now all back to field and then we got sweet corn growing in it as well you see the sun there there you go so hopefully this will be like a ribbon of sweet corn and also the potatoes the ulster prince in flower so you've got flowers on all these here now just this variety the variety next to it isn't in flower yet someone was surprised i think it's martin was surprised the other day that wheat flowered anyway i don't know whether he knew that potatoes flower as well but these are all in flower now as well this is the field of sweet corn a little bit weedy in that hollow there but otherwise it's not too bad but just looking at that there you can see how it's got droplets of water on it but it's caught the dew this morning little fly in there as well actually at the bottom there but it's i don't know it's got to be just over if you stretch that up 35 centimeters tall so it's grown away quite nicely definitely quicker than the sunflowers that were sown the same day this is the sunflowers that were sown the same day looks positively burr the field so there's one here that's well away but then if you look there's one there that's only just showing through so we're just going to hope that the uh, pigeons don't chew that one off but hopefully some more will come and it'll start to look as thick as the other fields this is the log cabin obviously it's just a pallet of wood it's going to be quite challenging putting it up and then this is the roof for it like a shingle roof so hopefully get the concrete down and then we can start trying to find out how it all goes together but it's not going to be a quick job last night we hosted the young farmers so worked really well in the shed over the door plenty of ventilation lots of social distancing and we put all the tractors in one place so this is why i farm for the machinery i think there's just over a million quid in the shed at the moment even including them John Deere's. So, can't wait for the editor to arrive. Hopefully, like I say, it's been dispatched, it's on the way. And then that can get PDI'd when we put the auger on that's in the crate in the back corner. Everyone keeps saying, where's the new fast track? Well, they told me July, so hopefully in the next few weeks that'll arrive just in time for harvest. But yeah, that's why I like farming. I've not parked that next to that, but they definitely got the right colour code, I'd say, because they look pretty much the right colour. The uh, Hog trailer and the Richard Westons. This cable's the feed for the Weybridge. So it's kind of like just lay behind the concrete for a few years. Anyway, Adam's going to dig along now and we're going to bury it, put some sand on it, and then put some tape on the top so we don't dig through it again. But it is actually going to end up encased in concrete. So he's just going to sort that out now. 
and then we've got to try and get the levels right here because if you look at this that I'm walking on here it kind of like goes up and down again so we don't want the log cabin on a wobble so we're gonna to have to put a base in flat and then chamfer the concrete to meet so that we get it all all nice and it's not wobbling just trying to work out what level to put the shed out so it doesn't end up in a hollow and it also doesn't end up on a plinth and then Adam, sorry, yeah, Adam's going to dig along there, get that cable really deep while we work out what we're doing and see if we can get all of the fence in to carry on taking the rest of the bund out and then we put the water tanks to the fur tanks here. Now I'm going to go something completely different, but hopefully we'll be able to spy on farmland at the same time. So watch this. I'm on a barge, going to go look at some crops in a different way. So we're on a, on a canal, it's Amanda's birthday, who keeps the sheep at Rain Hill, so we're going to go out in this boat now and um, see what we can find, probably some pubs. Ship ahoy. Two of them. We've got some ducklings. They don't look like they've been eaten by more then, they look quite chubby then. That's a water main or a petrol pipeline to the airport. We've got an obstacle. I'll just film it in case Joe crashes. Watch the back end. Well, that small child nearly fell in there. <laughs> the oak tree blown over there. The sheep are laid down and some of the cows. Does that mean it's going to rain? Some of them clouds are a bit black. A bit of spring barley there just shot. Only just though. Similar level to ours. On the home straight now. The home straight to the pub for dinner. And here we have the whole, the old historic Lion Salt Works, because where we are in Cheshire now is where the salt comes out of the ground. And there's some factories, I think that used to be a fertiliser factory. Just like driving a combine, it's rear wheel steer. With this like rubber thing. No expert, but I'd say them mucky looking things are baby swans. This what they call Sigmund's baby swans. They look like they've had a mud bath. They go shaking past these other boats. It's just like driving the combine really. Just a bit slower. It's a fancy bridge. Definitely the salt works now. Industrial. Tar to Chemicals Europe. It's like a massive factory. There's Amanda whose birthday it is. I think she's going to the Caribbean. <laughs> and behind this wall is a jury picker. In all its glory. This is Amy, wolf whistling the work, men. I get that bit in. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte with the glasses on to back your shirt. Full on blue jury picker. This is the beast. It's only a mini one. And then the pub's round that bend. You couldn't find a parking spot outside. Spot, spot. Got some more swans in the turning circle. Isn't that a brilliant design where to put the horn? You say hello, Amy, that works for the AHDB. Brilliant, we love it. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps me alive. Keeps me alive. Stop it! <laughs> just sailing past this temporary car park. Must be something to do with the factory there. And just look at the cost of health and safety. You've got all that barrier and all that walkways. 
of that to common sense and just saying, just don't get run over when you park your car. Look at that beast. Big dump truck. And a red jury picker. Bit of a boat lift there. Thirty ton lift. Boat yard. What do you do if your day job is canal boats going like three mile an hour? Get an M4. What a beast. Come on, Amanda. <laughs> Back from the boat trip, so we'll see what the lads have been up to. Sam's doing the sight lines, helping officers with the head cover. And then the laser set up on the base. We're stoning it up now, get the levels right. Cables now all buried now going into the into the Weybridge and they've got the caution electric tape over the top of it so if we ever dig in the future and we've forgotten it's there we'll find that first hopefully because that concrete's got a hump to it putting the steel there then we'll put expanding foam underneath it and use that as a shutter and cut the foam off afterwards so that the base ends up flat and the shed doesn't rock so the cabin doesn't rock but we don't end up with it in a hole either. Andrew's just rocked up back from Tedding. He's on that bumpy field, so he's used the fast track on the Tedder. Just flying back in the shed, so I can't get him on video. Sam's just cutting the sight lines to get out of our gateway. Because when that hedge comes out, you lose like 50 metres of vision of cars coming around the bend over the hill. So we always have to keep it knocked back. We probably do it about five or six times a year just to make it safer. So it sounds like something to happen, I don't know, I think it's a guard. I'm on a guard here. Cyclist has just gone past him now, probably cursing because they'll probably get punched. Well, they won't hear because it's landing on the grass there, but on the normal road, sometimes you get a little thorn. So they're giving punches. That's probably getting near the end today. I've burnt my face. I had some Lemkin sunglasses on, but I've burnt my face on the barge. Bit of a random day, but um, you should take days off every so often, apparently. That's what people keep telling me. Anyway, uh, there's an outro now coming up from George Davies that he sent me, and he spent a bit of time making it because it's actually a video as well. So uh, thanks for that. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow when normal business is resumed, and hopefully we'll be pouring some concrete as well.